All right, so it's been a long time since I've did one of these battle reports, and uh, I'm happy to say that I got to play my new Eldar, Craftworld, against some uh, Blood Angels. So I'll just go over the game, give my thoughts on my strategy of what I did, and tell you how I feel about the new Craftworld Eldar. So moving on. So here's my list. I'm Craftworld BL10, because I like my aspect warriors, and I went with two Vanguard detachments. So my first detachment, I've got a Farseer on jet bike with the Spirit Stones of Anathlon, which is the Beltan specific relic. And I also went with an Autark on a jet bike. I also gave him the Relic Sunstorm bike, which is 20 inch movement and objective secured, along with a Dragon Fire uh, Fusion Gun. I also made him my Warlord and gave him the World War Trait Fate's Messenger, which allows me to make one failed saving throw, uh, zero damage. So just to keep him alive. I got one ranger troop. I've got two 10-man scorpion squads. I gave one of the exarts crushing blow, which allows me to make all my hit rolls auto wound. And they both have biting blade for more attacks and damage. I have 10 banshees. Exarc having an executioner blade and Graceful Avoidance, which allows everyone in that unit to have a 4 plus invul save if they're in combat. Otherwise, they just have a normal 5 plus outside. And I have a Wave Serpent with Twinling Bright Lance, Star Engines, and Spirit Stones. Uh, not gonna lie, I kinda just threw together some extra points into the Wave Serpent, which is why it has this. But the extra 3 inch movement and the Spirit Stones making it have double the wound characteristics is nice so because it can move 19 inches now with that three inch movement and then for my second detachment i took the avatar i took Carandris, i took two five man shadow specters a fire dragon with a special weapon fire pike and five dark reapers with the i took bringers of death which just allows my exar to get one extra shot with his reaper launcher moving on to the Blood Angels list, he took a Battalion and a Patrol. For his Battalion, he took a Primaris Captain, a Primaris Lieutenant, and a Primaris Chaplain on Bike. For his HQ choices, uh, for his troops, he has five Assault Intercessors, and he has two five-man Intercessor squads. For his Elites, he has five Blade Guard Vet, a Primaris Apothecary, and for his Fast Attack, he has two Outrider squads. And for his patrol, he has Commander Dante, which is his warlord, a sanguinary priest. And for his troop choice, he has five tactical. And for his elites, you can't really see it there, but it's nine death company and nine sanguinary guard. So he's playing into his role of trying to get into close combat, which is good because that's what I want. I want to get into close combat. Obviously, I don't want to get charged by him because... As good as my units are, they are still glass cannons, but I want to get in close as much as possible here. And I built my army around the fact, because I have so many scorpions, I want to forward deploy and go up and just try to keep him in his area while I take objectives. So the mission we got was abandoned sanctuaries, uh, primary objectives being one objective for four, two objectives for another four, and more objectives for another four. So 12 for the objectives. You can score an additional two points for completing one of these, which was control the middle objective or kill an enemy unit within six inches of the center of the board start of their turn. So grand total, you can score 14 points around. Well, you can score, score two points at the beginning, but after that, 14 points around. The other downside to this mission was uh, there was no forward deployment. So I could not <laughs> move Carandris or my Scorpions out into the dead zone, as they referred to it. Or, I'm sorry, no man's land. So I was forced to keep my models back. Uh, secondaries, I went with to the last, Psychic Interrogation and Assassination. Uh, I went with to the last because... I felt like I could keep my units alive because it was the Avatar, the 10-man Banshees, 
and the wave serpent that all fit the category of to the last. So I figured I could keep those those three units alive. Psychic interrogation. He had a lot of characters, so I figured I could get a lot out of psychic interrogation. Even though I only have one farce here, so you know, fingers crossed that I don't lose him. And assassination. Uh, same reason for psychic interrogation. He had a lot of characters, so I felt like I could easily get that. For the Blood Angels, he went with Oaths of the Moment, Stranglehold, and Teleport Homers. So, these are his secondaries. A lot of them, I mean, Oaths of the Moment, easy to do. Stranglehold was easy for him to do. Deploy Teleport Homers, that one is questionable, but not impossible because, you know, he did have the bikers and he did have units in reserve that could do this. Probably would not have gone with Teleport Homers. Uh, so the pregame, I uh, went with a Webway Strike, and I put my Fire Dragons in reserves. I spent the extra CP for a Relic. I put my Shadow Spectres in reserves, and my Banshees in the Wave Serpent. Starting me off with 8 CP. And for him, he put Dante, Sanguinary Guard, and Sanguinary Priest in reserves, and he started with 10 CP. So just going off the deployment here, as you can see, he put his blade guard and three characters in the center. His two five-man intercessor squads, the uh, which I later found out he shouldn't have had a ten-man interse assault intercessor squad, a five-man tactical, and two outrider squads with a chaplain on bike over to the side. Over here, I had my ten-man. Scorpion Squad with Karanderis and the Avatar. This was facing against his uh, bikes. I put a Scorpion unit in the middle. Rangers up on top, thinking that, uh, yeah, they'll be good. They'll be safe. Uh, Dark Reapers on the bottom, uh, making sure that they're not against the wall so they can't get shot, along with the Autark and the Farseer and the Wave Serpent full of Banshees. So here you go. Here's a wide view of the shot. So the goal here... For me, is to just get Karanderis, Avatar, and the Scorpions to just take the left side, hold the objectives, and just base roll through there and hope that they can just continue to sweep after they get rid of the bikes and whatever decides to drop in front of them. Uh, same thing with the Banshees. I Banshees, Autark, and Farseer are all just there to stay out of line of sight so they don't get shot up. And we roll off to see who goes first, and the Blood Angel's good to go first. So, lucky for me, I didn't have to move out in the open and get shot up or anything like that, even though there's not... He doesn't have too much in cover, but I don't have that much shooting either, so... Being an old close combat army, mostly. Starter turn one. Um, I roll my Fate dice, which I gotta get used to. So my strands of Fate dice, I roll 2, 3, 4, 5, which gives me... Charge roll, psychic roll, hit roll, and wound roll. So all those are automatic sixes if I decide to use them. And in his command phase, he uh, uses Cataclysm on his chaplain, which gives an aura a plus one to wound, I think. Or he gave it to one unit. Sorry. He gave it to one unit, which obviously is going to be one of the bikes. He gave them plus one to wound with their weapons. Uh, he So he... Moves up his bikes, he advances the characters and the blade guard to take that center objective. Moving the tactical to take the middle objective in his deployment zone. Also advances the assault intercessors and moves up the two five man assault, uh, uh, the two five man intercessor squads to, you know, take their shots. In the shooting phase, he uh, doesn't have many targets to shoot at. So the intercessors take shots at my rangers, killing two of them, and the outriders take shots into the avatar, doing nothing. And that was pretty much the end of his turn. He got five points off that because he had stranglehold and he had uh, held the center for the extra two points for primary. Uh, going on my turn here, um, obviously I'm going to move everyone up. I move the Avatar up, who now moves 10. I know it's the old model, but the new model isn't on sale yet, so, you know, I just got to use my old one. Move Karanderis and the Scorpions up. 
move the Dark Reapers up to the second floor so they can take some shots. I take the Banshees out of the vehicle and I advance them and move the uh, Wave Serpent over just so next turn if the Blade Guard decide to move up to my Scorpions, you know, I can any fail charges, I can move my Scorpions off and make my Wave Serpent take the objective. I move the Farseer and the Artark up as well, just so I can get the reroll ones to hit. And I need to move the Farseer up so I can get the Psychic Interrogation off. So in the Psychic phase, I uh, cast Psychic Interrogation, which I get off. And I cast Doom on the Assault Intercessors. In the shooting phase, my avatar shoots the back squad of the Outriders. Because my goal, I, the reason I didn't shoot the first, uh, the front squad is because I want to be able to get my Scorpions and Karandras to get in there. Uh, because taking the Phoenix Horde, I am able to give one Scorpion unit objective secured within six inches of him. So. I'll be able to just secure that objective, even though I'd, I would secure it with bodies, but it's another reason why I run Karandras with my uh, Scorpions, in case I have to fight some troops. But uh, Avatar shoots into the back squad of Outriders, killing one. Reapers uh, split fire into the Intercessor squad, uh, killing... So I did the Exarch and one guy into the back squad, and the rest into the front squad of intercessors in the front squad of intercessors i killed four so leaving one and in the back squad i only killed one so i shouldn't have split fired because that's an oath of moments for him even though you know, i give him oath of the moment by shooting one of the outriders and killing it uh and then my banshees my banshees and artark and farsu shot into the Assault Intercessors with their shuriken weapons, killing only two of them, which is fine. Because, uh, you know, I, I want to be able to charge in and take the objective because Banshees can advance and charge. So, charging. Uh, Avatar makes it, of course, because he's so close. Karandras makes it. Uh, I use one of my Fate Dice to automatically get a 6 on my charge roll. So, just rolling another dice. And my scorpions make the charge as well. Over here, uh, I charge my banshees into the assault intercessors. I also charge the farseer and Atark in as well because I don't, even though, again, he doesn't have many shooting, I don't want them out in the open to be shot. So this is just to make sure that they're not out in the open and vulnerable. So going in, I started off with the avatar and scorpions i just attacked with the avatar and obviously he wiped him out because being strength 14 and minus five with his most powerful strike uh not not gonna live so the scorpions didn't really do anything but the whole point was to get them on the objective and closer to his side uh unfortunately i wasn't close enough to consolidate into the other bike squad so they were able to get away no problem and couldn't couldn't do anything about it uh my banshees uh, let me tell you about Banshees. Banshees are nasty. Uh, so when they charge, they get plus one to wound. And now that power weapons are plus one strength, they're strength four Banshees, wounding space brains on threes if they charge. If they do not charge, they're still just strength four, wounding on whatever with no plus ones. So because I got the charge off, they were wounding space brains on threes. Plus rerolls because the unit was doomed. And since these aren't your normal power swords, these are also AP minus four, those space marines were not getting an invul save. And they got wiped. I think I rolled really hot too, because I think I hit with everything. Yeah, and then just wounding on threes with three rolls, uh, yeah, I wiped the squad completely, even though it's all like one damage. So there we go. We got the Banshees. They did it. Uh, morale phase. He spent. 2 CP to keep that one intercessor around. I wouldn't have done it, but that's what he wanted to do. Everyone else passed because I only killed like one unit in the squads that I shot at. End of turn one, we've got eight to three. 
with Blood Angels in the lead. So, start of turn two, uh, I reroll my Strands of Fate dice, because it says at the start of every battle, and I roll a 1 1 3 6, which doesn't help me here, because it's advanced rolls. I got two advanced rolls, a psychic test, and a saving throw. Uh, what doesn't help me is the advanced rolls, because I won't be able to make any of those runs. So what he does is he does the blessing, again from his chaplain, fails. Uh, he moves up the intercessor squad, because he wants to take that objective away from me, my banshees. Which he can, because no, no one in there, well, I mean my Artark is objective secured, but he'd be outnumbered. He puts his characters and blade guard into a little formation there. Uh, looking at it now, it's illegal. He shouldn't have been able to do that. As you can see, all the ones with the red bases are the blade guard, and he's definitely, definitely out of uh, unit coherency there, but it's thematic, so it's okay. Uh, and as I said earlier, he moved his outriders and chaplain back to get away from the avatar, which that would be the end of his movement. Shooting, uh, well, actually that's a lie, that's not the end of his movement. Because he also brought down his death company, put him smack dab in the middle to go against the Banshees, and he brought down the Seigneurie Guard behind my Scorpions and Avatar, the Dante and the Seigneurie Priest. So, in the start of his shooting phase, he shoots the Seigneurie Guard into the back of my Scorpions, and he shoots the Outriders and Chaplain into Caranderis. Uh, unfortunately, he rolled, he rolled pretty good for the Seigneurie Guard, Granted, I mean, I think they hit on twos and their strength four, and I'm only toughness three, so it's not going to be too hard for him to miss and wound. Uh, but what he didn't expect was my uh, abysmal rolling. So, unfortunately, I lost a lot of scorpions <laughs> to his singer guard shooting. And the Outriders managed to do three wounds on Karanderus, which is the max he can do per phase. So, unfortunately, I lost six scorpions in that, uh, in that round of Sangria Guard shooting. So what I did was just remove all my guys so he couldn't make the charge. Or at least make the charge harder for him to do. He then shot the Intercessors into the Banshees, killing about three, I think, if I recall correctly. And him giving up on the charge with the Death Company, shot the rest of his uh, Death Company into the Banshees, uh, leaving only one left. So... I didn't didn't have the best saving throws, unfortunately, <laughs> for his round of shooting. Oh, I forgot to mention he also deployed teleport Homer with his uh, Sangarinary uh, priest when he dropped down. That is that he goes into his assault phase. He does a multi assault with the four man unit into my banshee and two characters, and he assaults the one lone guy just into my farseer. And surprise, surprise, I made it out alive. Uh, my Banshee lived through the the three Space Marines who went into him. And my Farseer took three wounds. Because, again, my saving throws were abysmal. I don't know why. I For some reason, four up, I just couldn't make. He just couldn't wound the Banshee. I think he got one wound on the Banshee, and I managed to just save it. And my Banshee was able to kill one Space Marine. Unfortunately, my Farseer, despite wounding... Hitting on twos and wounding on twos, couldn't kill the one space ring, and, and you know to the side of her. But that was the end. Uh, I used my two CP to auto pass my banshee because I need that banshee to live, since it's part of my two the last. And the scorpions, I failed my leadership test, so one ran. But being next to the avatar, I don't suffer combat attrition, so no one else ran on two plus. So. So start of my turn, Eldar. Uh, I get my Banshee the hell out of there. I also get the Autark the hell out of there. Put him behind the uh, the Banshee, uh, the Rangers and Dark Reapers. I move my Scorpions up and make my Wave Serpent take the objective, hoping to combat the Death Company here, so they they can't roam around and just destroy all the uh, destroy what I have left. And of course, I move the avatar up to the blade guard because that's who they—that's who he's gonna go fight. 
along with uh, Caranderus and Scorpions. And as you can see, we got my little tower right here. And then, end of my movement phase, I drop in my 10 Shadow Spectres, two 5-mans, on the objective in the back, uh, where my Scorpions are, so they can hold it, facing off against the Sanguine Guard. And then I Deep Strike my Fire Dragons, also, by my Scorpions, to hopefully take out the Outriders and the Chaplain. Psychic phase, I Psychic Interrogated the Captain in the middle there. Again, another 3 points. Smited the three man unit because they're in base to base contact with me. And I did three mortal wounds, killing one and leaving one with one wound left. Uh, my Farseer shot its pistol, killing the last remaining, well, not last remaining, the last remaining guy in combat with me. I got my 10 Shadow Spectres and I shot them straight into the Sanguinean Guard. I went with the Dispersion shot because it was a blast weapon. And since he was a nine-man squad, I got the D3 plus three shots on him. First wave, I got 28 shots, and I killed two. These are like strength five AP1 shots. So I'm hoping that he rolls a lot of two plus, or sorry, ones and twos. So I uh, only, only managed to kill two models there. And then with the second wave of shots, I got tw like 24 shots because he was still had six plus models in that squad so it's still d3 plus three i managed to kill a lot more so leaving him with only two models left so it was a good shot to have next i went with my dark reapers into the death company and i went with my rangers into the death company and i killed half of them i killed only five death company but he didn't remove the ones closest to my scorpions i assume he wanted to fight them and see if he could probably take them on, which, I mean, his death company, they're scary enough. They could probably pull it off. Uh, then I went with my fire dragons, where I shot the Exarch and one other fire dragon into the chaplain, and I fired the other three into the outriders. Three fire dragons into the outriders, destroyed them completely. Minus four, da d6 plus two damage, they, they were gone. And the Exarch and the other normal fire dragon into the chaplain. I got two wounds in. He failed both his saves. And since I was running the fire pike, the fire pike is d6 plus 4. And the normal guy is d6 plus 2. So I was doing 6 damage to the chaplain without having to roll any any dice. So he was he got obliterated. I then shot the Twindling Bright Lance from my Wave Serpent into the Blade Guard. I missed all my shots. Typical. And then I shot the Avatar into one of the Blade Guard and I killed one. And that was that. It was pretty lackluster. So going over here, you can see the dead bodies of uh, the dispersion shot that happened. And then uh, I went to the charge phase where I charged my Scorpions into Death Company and then my Avatar into the Blade Guard. I really wanted. I didn't want to multi charge into the blade guard because I, I didn't want them fighting back, and I really just wanted to kill the death company, which is why I strictly focused on the death company with my scorpions here and the avatar. I tried to just make sure that his characters couldn't three inch heroically intervene, so that's why I charged just that close guy right there, and not even though I couldn't. I couldn't go around anywhere. Because there's three characters in the middle. But that was that. Uh, my scorpions uh, actually took a lot to kill the death company. I had to, even with all my attacks, he still almost lived because of the feel no pains. And it just sucked because I, I didn't get any of my mortal wounds from my Mandy Blasters against the death company. Which uh, you get by getting sixes to wound. It was... It was close. They they would have actually lived. Uh, and then with my avatar in the close combat, uh, actually he interrupted me to do the blade guard attacks first. He did about three wounds to me in close combat, and because the avatar halves the damage rounding up, so there are two damage weapons only do one damage. And uh, I did my sweeping blow attack because you know I wanted to get fourteen attacks. They do two damage, so they 
you know, I would still need two of them to kill one guy, but I feel like it was better than just doing this strong hammerhead attack. And I did two wounds. That was it. Or sorry, I did one wound, which did two damage against the blade guard. So, uh, not very good combat phase. And then, Farseer combat, I swung my sword at that lone intercessor, and uh, nothing happened. And he attacked me, and nothing happened. So, it was kind of just a wash on this battlefield here. But, it was good nonetheless. Because it uh, helped me out here. So end of turn 2. As you can see. It's now uh, 16 to 28. So start of his turn 2. He uh, moves Dante and the Sanguinary Guard. And the Priest. Over towards my Wave Serpent. He then brings one. Uh, one of the Sanguinary Guard back. And then begins to do. Uh. Teleport homers again with the Sanguinary Priest. Uh, shooting. It was a very quick phase for him. Uh, shooting. He uh, began to... He shot the one Intercessor that wasn't in combat anymore into the lone Banshee and missed every shot. Which, thank God. Because that Banshee whew, is probably the luckiest Banshee ever. He then shot uh, his characters and... Sanguinary Guard into the Wave Serpent, managing to do three wounds to it, bringing it down to 11 wounds. Shot a Sanguinary Guard and his characters in the center into the Wave Serpent, managing to wound it, so now it's down to 11 wounds. Still good, still strong. But that was pretty much the end of his, uh, that was pretty much the end of his shooting. So, combat, he charges. He charges the Sanguinary Guard into the Wave Serpent. He charges his characters into the Avatar. And he charges that lone Intercessor into the Farseer, hoping to kill her. Uh, so, I question his thinking here. Because he started with the Intercessor into my Farseer. And I asked him... Why would you want to start there? And he didn't really have an answer. I said, do you want to hit with your blade guard? I mean, I know it's half damage, but you could bracket him. He d decided to go with the, the intercessor. So, intercessor goes in. I believe he does like two wounds to my farseer. So, almost kills it. But I interrupt and I'm with my avatar. And I attack his primaris apothecary and his loot. Tenant, I want to say. So he doesn't get the reroll ones to wound. And I go with my big strike and I kill both of them. Barely. I barely kill both of them. The apothecary, insta kill. The lieutenant, I rolled a six for damage because only, only one of my wounds went through on him and I, I managed to kill him that way. And so, Sanguinary Guard against my vehicle. Uh, no surprise there. Sanguinary Guard blew it up completely. Uh, my avatar killed them all. Uh, and then his uh, captain and blade guard attacked me. And they kill. Uh, they didn't kill. They uh, managed to get me down to five wounds on my avatar. So not not looking too good for my avatar right now. He's kind of he's kind of hurting. He's not on his final bracket. But, you know, only five wounds left. He also uh, uh, spent the two CP, I think is how much it costs, to do in depth as duty N to also strike with his lieutenant. So, he, he managed to get some wounds in there before he went down. Uh, my turn. Uh, again, I get my Farseer there. The reason I'm keeping my Farseer in combat is because Psychic Interrogation. If I run away from combat, I cannot cast Psychic Powers. So, it's the only reason why my Farseer has stayed in combat this long. Otherwise, I would have moved him out. Uh, so I move my Scorpions over to assist with my Farseer and take this objective away from him. I only scored four primary points this turn because I only, I'm only i only holding one objective. So I, I need to need to get my points back up. Uh, Karanderus and Scorpions move over. Uh, the reason they didn't join the Avatars is because they didn't make their charges. Uh, I move my Autark over 
on to the objective next to the Sanguinary Guard. I move my Shadow Specters over to greet good old Dante and uh, the Sanguinary Priest. And that would be the end of my movement. Uh, shooting phase, I shot the Dark Reapers into the Sanguinary Guard, killing two of them, as well as the Ranger Squad, and the uh, Rangers didn't do anything. Uh, Shadow Specters, I shot their heavy version of their gun, which is strength 6, AP 3, and 3 damage. I shot one squad into the priest, killed the priest. Shot another squad into Dante, and killed Dante. Actually, no, I didn't kill Dante. Dante actually lived. It was my Autark that killed Dante. Uh, psychic phase, I psychic interrogated again, because this is probably the last time I'm going to get but that objective. And I smited one of the space rings and I did one mortal wound. I rerolled it and then I still got one wound. So it was pretty bad. I then shot a pistol from my seer into a guy, failed. So I shot my Autark into Dante with the fusion and I killed him. Uh, starting with Karendris, I attacked the blade guard all by himself. I used his I forget the name of his weapon, but it doubles his attacks. And I wiped out the entire Blade Guard unit. Because he is nasty. Hitting on twos, wounding on threes. He also gets his Mandy Blasters on a well, six plus like everyone else, but he his does two mortal wounds instead of one. So I got six mortal wounds off that off his attacks. And I was just able to grind them down. My avatar attacks the captain, and the captain lives. I get him down to one wound. Couldn't couldn't do couldn't do enough damage to kill him. And the avatar takes two wounds, so he's now down to three. The uh, scorpions killed the three man scorpion squad. Killed one guy in combat and took three wounds because I just I couldn't roll a three plus save to save my life against tactical marines. It was kind of embarrassing. So I got one wound left on the Exarch. And the 10-man took out both the, uh, both the Intercessors over here, securing this side of the board for me. And saving the Farseer's life. End of turn 3. As you can see, I am catching up to him. And this is pretty much the last turn. Because turn 3, he uh, doesn't have anything to move because everything's in combat. So, Intercessors pull out their pistols and they gun down my poor Exarch in combat with them. Sanguinary Guard charged me, charged my Autark. I used the Strands of Fate Auto 6 to hit him and I uh, obliterated him with the uh, the Melted Gun, killing him as he charged in. And then uh, the captain goes, I get to attack first. Because he had no charges. I kill the captain. He does in death this duty end. Didn't wound me, unfortunately. So my avatar survived with only three wounds left. We, we, we called the game there. Because pretty much then my avatar would just go up and take out his tactical squad. And I would just score the entire turn five on my own. So end of turn four. As you can see, the score's here. I, I pulled it off. Barely, but I did pull it off. So end of the game, uh, zero points for painted army on both sides, unfortunately. Uh, it, there were some models that just couldn't get painted. He had some models that he couldn't get painted. Uh, primary scored 44, he scored 30. Secondaries, I scored, scored 34, he scored 21. And the grand total, 78 to 51. So end of the game. Um, I felt like I did pretty good with my army, especially what happened, seeing how I couldn't uh, you know, advance deploy with my scorpions and try to barricade them off. But, I mean, unit review here. Avatar was good. Being able to move 10 inches, 14 wounds. I mean, you can't, you can't hide them anymore. But the increase in movement is nice. Uh, Karandras is strong, though. Honestly, he didn't really get to do too much. He killed, he killed a four-man blade guard unit, and that was pretty much it. That's all he did. So... I'll probably need more experimentation with him to see what happens. Banshees, Banshees were great. They killed a nine, eight man 
eight man intercessor squad assault intercessor squad i mean he wasn't he was supposed to have a five man squad but you know still they killed an eight man so they 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 got really buffed they're good highly recommend them uh scorpions scorpions are okay it's not they got i mean you you want to send them against blobs because they just get four attacks base plus the mandy blasters for mortal wounds so they they can dish out a lot of damage uh Unfortunately, this mission just wasn't for them because I couldn't utilize their stealth. Uh, Shadow Spectres, uh, a little disappointed in them. I mean, they you know they did their things, being able to dish out that many shots because they went against a blob. But uh, I I think I just need to utilize them a little bit better. Uh, Fire Dragons, Fire Dragons were great, though. Honestly, they only did one thing that entire game, which was kill the chaplain and the outriders. I mean, they paid for their points on their own. Uh, what else was it? Uh, the Artark, he was good. I, you know, I mainly just used him for his rerolls of one. Uh, my thought process was that he would go around on his 20-inch movement jet bike and snipe characters and monsters with his melted gun, but I didn't really do that, which is why I gave him the Warlord trait where once per turn he could make a failed saving throw at zero damage in hindsight i probably should have gone with the Beltan warlord trait which allowed me to pick one unit in my command phase to have reroll all hits is probably what i should have gone with but you know he did okay uh my farseer i mean the farseer is always a good choice it's always a default choice probably want to run more but with two vanguard detachments i'm kind of limited on how many heroes i can run so I mean, if Crowders don't work out, then he might get replaced, but we'll see. Uh, who else? Uh, Dark Reapers. Dark Reapers are Dark Reapers. They're okay. Every Everyone hates them, so. <laughs> and uh, Wave Serpent. I mean, it didn't really do anything, to be fair. It got, got hit in close combat and just instantly died. But it was against a very elite unit, so it's... Other than that, I mean, my Rangers didn't do anything. And the reason I have Rangers in the army is because this is the... This is what I expect my end goal uh, escalation league army to look like. So this was good to finally test it out and see what it did. Overall, I think a few things could have gone badly. Obviously, I got really lucky with the Banshee being able to get the hell out of dodge and not get shot up or in combat. I got... Uh, I guess you can call it lucky that when he shot up my scorpions and banshees that he ruined his chances of charging those units. Though, to me, that was really hurtful because, whew, that was a lot of models I lost in that one shooting phase. These are elite units, so they ain't, they ain't cheap. And, uh, yeah, I can't, can't really say too much else. I, I want to get more practice in with my army, obviously, so I can get more... Th Feedback on it, Strands of Fate. There's something I haven't talked about. Strands of Fate. Um, interesting mechanic. I never used all my Strands of Fate because a lot of it was like, a lot of them that I got was just advanced rolls. So it's like, uh, not going to be really using any of these uh, advanced rolls, unfortunately. Uh, the Psychic Test came in handy, but being a Psyker, only having one Psyker, I mean, it was an auto use on one and then that's about it. The saving throw one I used a lot if I ever got it, which I think I only got once. And I never used the auto hit, which I should have used, but I, n I never used it. But it's an interesting system, and honestly, it's pretty fun to have. It's a little bit better than the faith dice that, or miracle dice, I don't remember what they're called, for the Sisters of Battle. You get an automatic four each turn. You might, your incentive to just keep using them. So, that is it. For this battle report, I said I would get you guys one this month, as a promise I made last month in one of our podcast episodes, that I will get a battle report out at least once a month. That is my goal, and I plan to do th keep this goal unless something horrible happens. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hit that subscribe button, leave a comment, tell me what I could have done better or what I messed up on. And uh, look forward to the next one. I'll catch you guys later. Bye-bye.